and this is how if you buy a generator a one curie generator how the activity will be reducing so as the time passes the activity will the molybdenum activity will keep on reducing and after about 50 hours that is about two days this will be only about 60 per 50 per 60 percent so say 55 or 60 percent now at the same time if you take a molybdenum uh, which is pure uh, technetium had been removed from it the technetium will start growing slowly and at 24 hours this will almost come to about 94 95 percent so this is the time we elute our technetium generator that is every day morning we come to the nuclear medicine departments and we will elute the technetium and this is available for uh, imaging studies so this is how what happens if you have a generator a non curie generator is bought maybe in the first day we elute it and don't use the activity then the activity will start growing then it will come to about uh, 60 to 70 700 uh, 650 to 700 millicuri in the first day. Then we remove a pertechnetate from it. Then again, it will come to zero. Again, it will grow. On the second day, the activity will reduce. Then we do a second elution on the second day. Then the third day, we again elute. Fourth day, we elute. And fifth day, we elute it. And if you do not do the elution, the technetium will also decay in the same manner. So this is where we use it, maybe about five elutions we can do in a technetium generator. On the fifth day, we will hardly have about 20% of the activity. That is why the nuclear medicine department or the radio pharmacist will have to plan all the studies depending upon the availability of technetium. So what, wherever you need more amount of um, pertechnetage, those studies can be scheduled in the first two or three days. And those studies which are which are needing less amount of activity, you push it to the later days. So maybe you know when we are getting the generator on the um, initially, maybe all the cardiac studies, maybe the bone studies, we will schedule it on the first two three days. Then of course on those days we can also do the DMSA, DTPA, and all other things. But towards the end of the week, we probably confine to the, the, the studies which are done with the smaller amount of activity. So planning the generator and planning the work is an important activity of the radio pharmaceutical uh, radio pharmacist as well as the nuclear medicine physician. So what happens in a technetium generator? This is the core component of the technetium generator. You have an alumina column. This alumina column is loaded with the pertechnetate, uh, that with the molybdenum. Molybdenum is absorbed to this um, alumina column and it is not going to come out of this column. It will be held there without any problem. Then what we can do is that you take saline, um, take a little amount of saline, maybe about 5 ml of saline, you take it. You pass it through the column, the pertechnetate will be eluted and you will get the pertechnetate which is ready for your uh, nuclear medicine studies. So this is how the generator is. We have the, gen the generator is kept in a shield so that you know when we are handling the generator, when we are using the generator, the radiation dose is minimum. This will be a lead shield. This is our uh, column what we are having it with the with the molybdenum with the molybdenum absorbed in it. Then what we do is that we keep an evacuated uh, we keep a 10 ml um, saline vial to the top of it. And on the other end, we keep an evacuated vial and the saline will be drawn through the tubes. It will come to the column. It will elude the pertechnetate and there is a filter kept over there. It will be filtered and it will be coming to this vial. So this vial is now ready for you to be used as a radio pharmaceutical. This is in pertechnetate form and pertechnetate is a radio pharmaceutical. So the generator can be used for one week by which time the activity will come to one fourth of the load. The generator can be eluted every 24 hours by which time about 94% saturation takes place. Now, if you want to do a repeat elution, that is okay. You did an elution in the morning. You got about 500 millicuri of activity. Now, you want little more activity in the evening. Nothing prevents you to do one more uh, elution. Maybe after six hours growth, 
we will get about 50% of the activity of the molybdenum load. So, if, for example, if the molybdenum load is 500 millicuri, and if you do an elution after six hours again, we will get about 250 millicuri. So, you can always schedule a few more studies. And the generator yields a pertinent edge, and this is used as a radio pharmaceuticals for thyroid uptake studies. So, the, the, after eluting, we are directly getting a generator. We are directly getting a radio pharmaceutical, which can be used for the thyroid uptake studies. Now, one of the question is, how come the same technetium gets into different organs? We are getting only pertinent but the, how come we are able to manipulate and do a large number of studies using uh, pertinent edge? Now, for example, here, this is a study of a brain, this is a brain imaging agent, brain image. This is the image of a bone. This comes to the, the renal imaging, the kidneys, lung imaging, the cardiac imaging. And this is possible because technetium is one of the very wonderful elements which offers a very versatile chemistry. Now, the chemistry of technetium is very important. This is a man-made element. If you know, till 1937, till it was discovered by Segre and uh, Seabuck, um, technetium was not known to the mankind. It has got a molecule, the atomic way, a number of uh, 43. It's a group seven element, a group seven element, and this is the electronic configuration. If you look at the electronic configuration, you have actually in the fourth orbit, there are five electrons, and the fifth orbit, there are two electrons. And uh, if you brush up your chemistry, these seven electrons can be very easily removed. So always protect edge exists in plus seven state. That means seven electrons are removed and then you get a technetium in minus seven form. And this including technetium can exist in eight oxidation state. That, if, that means if you reduce it, you can get in a different oxidation states from minus one to plus seven. There are eight oxidation states. That means uh, technetium forms complexation in uh, different oxidation states. For example, we call it a technetium, uh, you know the radio pharmaceutical DMSA. DMSA exists in DMSA 3, DMSA 5. Then your MIBI is actually technetium in uh, plus 1, um, HMBO is in plus 5. So different oxidation states is possible. And technetium generally forms octahedral complexes. And the, the we are able to make this large number of radio pharmaceuticals because the technetium complex is with a variety of chelating agents. So thanks.